Hey guys and gals, and welcome back to the channel. I'm here to solve a real first world problem for you. So you have some money burning a hole in your pocket and you're looking to buy yourself a really nice luxury watch. But for whatever reason, you're either sick of people talking about Rolex and hey, I kind of get that, or you can't get one. And I kind of get that too, because of this 80 nonsense we've covered extensively on this channel. Well, fret not, there's actually some really awesome Rolex alternatives that I think will bring you a ton of satisfaction and joy that represent honestly quite good value on the secondhand market. One of the dirty secrets of the watch world is that a lot of watches, once you buy them, are just like a car. They plummet in value. And what that means is if you don't mind buying used and there's lots of great dealers out there you can trust, you can get some incredibly good value watches on the secondhand market that will bring you tons of joy without paying the hefty depreciation that the first owner took on it. So what I wanna to do today is cover a couple of the most common Rolex watches people tend to buy, and then specifically tell you my personal opinion on some of the best alternatives to these watches that represent incredible value used. Now to be clear, there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of alternatives to watches we're gonna talk about today. What I'm presenting to you here are the ones that I think are personally some of the best value. I'm a value buyer, I love value. And also ones that I think are gonna bring you a lot of joy. And some of these are gonna be popular models you've heard of. Some of them I think are quite overlooked bargains that you should really take a serious look at. I say this from a place of confidence. I've owned dozens and dozens of Rolex. I still own three, but I've also owned a lot of these alternatives. And customary wristwatch check, today I'm wearing my Omega Speedmaster with the 1863 movement in it. I took it off the bracelet and put it on a strap, feeling it today. But coming to you as a watch collector who's grateful to like all types of watches, everything from Casio G-Shocks to Long and Patek Philippe. And I've owned a lot of these things, and so I speak from a place of having a feel for what these watches are we're gonna talk about today. So without further ado, ramble over, let's get started. So we'll start with the most common Rolex model everybody's out there to get potentially, and what I think are some great alternatives to it. Rolex Submariner. I'm sure you've heard of it, no doubt. So there's a couple obvious alternatives to this watch that represent incredible value, quite honestly, on the secondhand market. The first and foremost is any Omega Seamaster, specifically the ones from the mid 90s and on. You have the Bond Seamaster, the 253180, that was the Pierce Brosnan watch, but you have the whole Planet Ocean line. There's all sorts of these uh, different in-house movements, the coaxial escapements that they introduced uh, about a couple decades ago. These watches on the secondhand market can be found anywhere from about $2,000 to mid threes, very, very comfortably. That's way cheaper than you're gonna buy these watches new, and that's also <laughs> ludicrously cheaper than you're gonna pay for an equivalent Rolex Submariner. Another really overlooked watch, I know Breitling is not for everybody. They, they tend to be a love it or hate it. I like Breitling. I've owned many Breitlings, including three, four different nap timers. So I have a bit of a bias towards this brand of liking them. Their watches are dirt cheap on the secondhand market when it comes to their original resale value. Breitling has a resale problem, which is a value buyer's dream on the secondhand. If you take a look at their Super Ocean or Colt line, especially the Super Ocean line, you can get some watches that have really well-made cases, lots of different bracelet options. Breitling bracelets are phenomenal. You can also get them on straps. These watches are incredible bargains on the secondhand market. I've seen these dip below $2,000 for some of the Colts and the Super Oceans are quite readily available in the $2,000 range. These watches are incredible bang per buck. If you've ever seen one in person, they are very, very well made. They don't feel like you're taking a discount at all compared to a Rolex. Some of them actually feel nicer to me than the equivalent Rolex. And I would highly recommend if you're open to Breitling as a brand, and I really think you should, they're great watches to take a look at. Another brand, actually on that note, that has a little bit of a mixed reputation that I'm still very much a lover of is Panerai. I did a video on why I think Panerai is underrated a couple of years ago. I've owned Panerai. I used to be a fanboy back in the mid 2000s when they were really hot. To be honest, they have done some silly stuff that I think has diluted their brand over time, but that doesn't represent the brand as a whole, and there are some great values out there, particularly any Luminor or Radiomir, especially the pre-in-house movement ones, the ETA ones from 10, 15 plus years ago. They are built very solid. The movements are at a movements. You can get them serviced by basically anyone. Parts are readily available, and you're getting a very iconic Italian design, if that's what you're into. To me, the crown on a Luminor with a little flip clap thing is, I don't, I don't know what they're called that. Uh, it's just one of the coolest little mechanisms I've seen on a watch. It's very joyful to play with. Great watch. 
And then my oddball pick is, of course, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. This is hot horology at a discount price. These can be picked up as cheap as $5,000 and up. Believe me, you're gonna make up for that when you have to service these things. They will not be economical to service. But if you want something that's even of a higher standard than I would say the Rolex equivalent, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms are ridiculously cheap on the second market compared to what the original retail price was. Depreciation is our friend on these watches. But that's the Submariner, what about the other models? So the next most common model I hear people asking about is the GMT. I've even seen people ask me to stop talking about the Rolex GMT and the Pepsi. I hear you, whatever. There are actually quite a few GMT options out there, dozens that would fill this, but there's a couple that I think are just great value secondhand that I'd recommend you take a look at. To pick a brand that's also kind of there or not for people, Grand Seiko makes some incredible GMT watches. Some of them are mechanical high beat automatics, some of them are spring drive. I'm a mechanical guy. The high beat movement is to me where the sweet spot is, but the spring drive is vastly more reliable in terms of timekeeping. And it is very interesting engineering that is something that should not be overlooked. They're known for their dials. They're known for their hand finishing. These watches are very much, I would say, a level above quality for the equivalent Rolex. And they can be had used for about 40 or 50% off retail all day long. I also can't go without saying the Omega Seamaster. The Seamaster we talked about as a Rolex alternative for the Submariner. They also make a GMT model. So you can get a GMT Seamaster with 2000 foot water resistance as an example. Not that anybody ever would need that for very little money compared to the original retail. We're talking, I've seen these all day available for the $3,000 range, great value. And if you're like, look, I really wanna get a real bargain. The Oris Aquas has a GMT line as well. These things are also incredible value. And we're talking easily below $2,000 for the Oris Aquas line, which also tends to source very common movements from Etten Salita. So these are very serviceable watches to keep. I know a lot of you out there looking for a Daytona equivalent. Chronographs is one of those complications that many people seek to own. I hear you, I've owned them all. I've had four or five Navitimers. I've had multiple Speedmasters. I've had Seamaster Chronos, you know, like we're talking about with the Speedmaster. I've had Rolex Daytonas. I honestly don't even tell you, I can't even tell you all the watches that I've had that are chronograph. They are cool and it is a, you know, kind of useful function and it is mechanically very cool to look at. A couple alternatives that I think are great value. Obviously, I'm gonna say the Omega Speedmaster. I literally think this is the best watch you can buy under 10K. And I, I know that's a bold statement. Historical Amania movement, a version of this went to the moon, whatever that means to you. If you like the design, to me, it's an iconic design. It's a simple design. You can have, depending on the generation, Speedmaster is in good shape from the $4,000 range up to sky's the limit if you want like a Sedna Gold pre-owned one for 20 or $30,000. Great options in this range. I also think the IWC Pilot Chronos are kind of cool. If you're into aviation and a lot of you that like these GMTs like aviation, take a look at an IWC Pilot Chrono. I particularly like the Le Petit Crince Chrono. That's a cool line. And again, it has a little bit of an aviation flair to it. Breitling Navitimer is something, as I've mentioned, I've owned multiples of. I don't think you can ever go wrong with a Navitimer. Some people find them a bit over the top in styling. I think they're iconic. I love them, but they represent great value used and they tend to hold their value once you acquire them. And then a couple just out there options I think are overlooked that are genuinely really good watches. You got the Glass Shoot Original 60s series. You can get those in a chronograph. Those are pretty cool. You've got Vacheron Constantin overseas chronographs that you can get in the, let's say $15,000-ish range. It's a lot of money, but compared to what these things cost new, it's, you know, we can call $15,000 a bargain. It's a bargain for what it is. And speaking of an insane bargain, you have Breguet with the Type 21 that a lot of you may have heard about. These are genuinely a Breguet. I think they have a very cool dial. I think they have a very interesting design to them. And it is a level above, as is the Vacheron, quite honestly. And I'd say even the Glass Shoot, the original, above what you would get from a Rolex Daytona. And for our last category, let's go ahead and pick on uh, Rolex dress watches. Nobody's buying Cellini. If you're looking for a dress watch, you're probably looking at a date just, or if your budget stretches a day date. There's lots of awesome alternatives out here. And you know, one of the easiest ones to pick up on would be any sort of a Cartier, but everybody knows what a Tonk and what a Santos is. My personal buy from a Cartier, you can get, you know, Bala and Blue on some of these cheap, but I really like the Roadster. It has kind of that Art Deco-y, sports car-y, whatever they want to call it, attribution to it. These things are insanely good value for money. All day long, you can find these under $3,000. I know people are like, it's more of a feminine watch. 
I don't know what that means. And if you're comfortable with your masculinity or femininity, I don't know why you should worry about this nonsense. Beautiful watch, very well made, easy to service. They had ETA based movements in them. These were buy for me all day long. There's lots of other buys though, so let's go there. At Grand Seiko Elegance line, their manual line movements specifically, I think are beautiful watches all day long. Something else I would take a look at. JLC, I'm a big Reverso guy. The Squadras used to be quite cheap. Uh, some of the larger case, like the Grand Tel, I, I think Reversos to me, if you like Art Deco design, and I do, I think are unbeatable for any price you can get them used. They tend to be worth less than half of their original retail, if not more than that. There's the Omega Globemaster. It's a kind of a love it or hate it. I think it's a nice watch, quite honestly, but it wouldn't be my pick. The Long Jeans Master Collection comes up quite frequently too. Those are quite decent value as used pieces under $2,000. But my real pick, honestly, for this line would be outside the JLC, JLC and Roadster be my number one pick. I think La Suta Original, especially with the Panomatic or the Senator series. These watches are beautiful to me. This is like your classic strap dress watch. I think these are unbeatable for what they are. So there you go, guys. There's some alternatives to these Rolex models that I think are great value. This is obviously not an exhaustive list. And you'll also notice that I didn't mention Tudor because to me, Tudor is the obvious one and Tudor is a bit well known at this point. These are other picks that I would honestly pick on my list. Nothing against Tudor, but if you know about Rolex, you know about Tudor. Outside the Rolex microcosm, these are the watches that I would take a look at. So hope you found that helpful. If you did, please give me a like, a thumbs up, a subscription and if it's helpful share it with your friends as always appreciate the patronage to this channel an awesome day and i'll catch you guys in the next video